All right, let's talk about uh, contacting and pre-screening the seller now. If you're gonna talk to individual sellers, I'm not talking about banks now. Some folks, they wanna contact the seller by mail because they don't feel comfortable picking up the phone and calling. Well, what, the, way I, the way I see it is, if you send them a piece of mail, that really only delays the inevitable phone call and leads into that follow-up phone call. So if you're wanting to break the ice, send them a handwritten note or a postcard. You know, <clears throat> what you may, uh, if, if, what I've done and what you'll, you may do is, you, know, you might use my example or you design your own postcard that you sell or send to sellers that just basically says, I buy houses with your contact information. And you keep a stack of them in your office and when you know of a deal where you want to send the seller a piece of mail to break the ice and then follow up with a phone call, you just hand write their address on that postcard and put a stamp on it and flip it in the mail. Or you could always have a letter in your computer, you know, fill in the name, hit print, toss it in the mail. That's what I do with the, um, the BPO leads that I'm now getting from, uh, from the realtors in my, my area there, John and Linda. I just have a, a letter, you know, just a basic uh, letter that says, you know, I buy houses. I fill in their name, print it out, and chuck it in the mail because it's onesie twosie. It's not a big list I'm mailing to. It's one here, two there, one here. And um, what I don't do is indicate that I have any idea of why they're motivated, even if I know. So if, you're, if you've got a seller that uh, you happen to know is facing foreclosure, uh, there's a couple of different approaches, there's a couple of different trains of thought. One is you approach them with the I stop foreclosure, I know you're in foreclosure, I can help you out of your situation approach. And the other is, if you own an unwanted home or need to sell now, uh, you know, contact me, it, which I think is a little more benign, it's less intrusive, perhaps, and then let them tell you their situation. Um, I find that, for me, that works a little better because then I don't put the seller on the defensive thinking, well, how do you know that about me? That's my private business. So anyway, um, if you are inclined to send a piece of mail before you call, do that. Otherwise, I say just call them. Just call them. You know, it, why, why wait? Pick up the phone and call. Uh, obviously, the idea here is to get the deal now. The longer you wait, the more likely someone else is going to snag that deal if it's a deal. Will you say the wrong thing? Stick your foot in, the mouth, in your mouth and say the wrong thing to a seller? Yeah, absolutely you will. You're going to sound like a doofus. Until you, so get over it. You, you got you to gotta stink at something before you'll ever be good. So here again I say, why not start stinking immediately? You're going to say the wrong thing, so what? Get over it. You know, if, if that's what's keeping you from getting started, you're never going to get started. The goal is to close the deal right then on the phone. That's what the wolves are all about, right? Close the deal on the phone right then. Obviously you need to get the paperwork done, but if there's any way possible for you to get come to an agreement on the phone, do it, do it then. Here are the magic words. If I paid all cash and closed on the date of your choice, what would be the least you could accept? Then wait for their response, and no matter what they say, even if it's half what you would be willing to pay, you ask, is that the best you can do? And there will come a time where you're talking to a seller where you say to yourself, you know, I, I, think I could pay about $120,000 for this house and make a killing on it. And the seller says, uh, the least I'll take would be ninety. <laughs> and you'll say, <laughs> Really? No, you need to say, okay, uh, tell me though, is that the best you can do? All right, 80. I'll tell you what, is that the best you can do? That little question right there, over the years, all the years I've been doing this has probably made me a half a million dollars. <laughs> Just asking it. So if I paid all cash and closed on the date of your choice, some of you have heard that said before where it, it goes, if I paid all cash and closed quickly, you know what I learned? Not all sellers want to close quickly. I, had, uh, I bought a house from a lady who was uh, in a jam. She was behind on her property taxes. The house was coming up for 
tax auction. And, um, but it wasn't coming up for like three months. Well, my assumption was that she wanted to sell immediately. And I said, hey, I can close a week from Friday. How's a week from Friday? A week from Friday good? Let's do this week from Friday. You good with a week from Friday? And she said, stop. It, sounds like it feels like you're putting pressure on me. And I said, really? I figured for sure you'd want to close quick. And she said, no, I don't. I, 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 want to, I got to close before the auction, but I need to figure out where I'm going to go. I've got my kids to deal with. I, you know, I just got a new job and blah, blah, blah. And so every seller wants to close on the date of their choice. And that it became my new mantra or my new USP. That's a better way to describe it. My new, my new unique selling proposition. Um, and then when you're talking to a seller about a house where there's equity that they're unwilling to give up and you're going to put together some sort of seller financing type deal with them, the magic words are, can you wait for your equity? In other words, will you take payments on your equity? A seller that's willing to do that is probably a good one uh, to talk about seller financing with.